Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're uh, tackling the ongoing story of COVID-19, specifically its evolution and, you know, the vaccine situation. Yeah, it's a lot. We've gone through quite a bit of material articles, news, even some uh, theoretical pieces. Exactly. And the goal here is really just to pull out the key stuff for you, try to make sense of it all without getting totally bogged down. It's definitely a complex picture. We want to give you the important takeaways. Okay, so let's maybe start at the beginning, or what people think might be the beginning. The origin theories. Our sources cover a few angles here. They do. I mean, the main scientific consensus still points towards a natural jump from animals. Yeah. Zoonotic spillover, they call it. Right. That's the dominant theory. But uh, the materials we looked at also mention other possibilities being discussed. You know, the lab leak idea comes up as another theory in some sources. It does. It's important to see that full spectrum of what's being discussed out there, even if the evidence leans one way currently. Definitely. But, okay, wherever it started, the virus didn't just stay put, did it? It started changing, evolving. Oh, absolutely. That's fundamental to viruses. Mm. They replicate, make copies of themselves, and sometimes, well, mistakes happen in that copying process. Tiny errors. Mutations. Exactly. Though. Mutations. And sometimes these mutations lead to new versions, variants. And these variants can behave, you know, a little differently. Yeah. And that's been a huge part of the story. Some variants spreading faster, some maybe being a bit sneakier when it comes to our immune system. Right. That's why tracking them is so critical. It's like this constant um, biological arms race almost. Mm -hmm. The virus adapts. So naturally, that leads us to the vaccines. Yeah. Their development was incredibly fast. Unprecedentedly fast. Uh -huh, and yeah. the sources highlight different kinds. You know, you yep. got the mRNA ones like Pfizer and Moderna, which were kind of revolutionary. How do those work again, basically? Well, they essentially give your cells instructions, like a little recipe to make just a harmless piece of the virus, spike protein. Your immune system sees that piece, learns to recognize it, and builds defenses. Okay. And then there are more traditional types, too. Yeah, like vaccines using an inactivated sort of killed virus or a weakened version. Different strategies to achieve the same goal, train the immune system. And just like the virus kept changing, the vaccines had to keep up. We saw updated boosters coming out. Precisely. As new variants like Omicron became dominant, the original vaccine protection wasn't quite as strong against infection, so boosters were tweaked to better match those circulating strains. It's really science adapting on the fly, isn't it? It really is. And that's maybe the biggest takeaway here from all the sources, this constant back and forth. Virus evolves, science responds. You need that ongoing surveillance, watching for new variants, figuring out what they mean. So when we talk about the latest updates, what are the sources pointing towards now? What's the current thinking? It seems like the trend is moving towards perhaps a more predictable pattern, maybe something like the annual flu shot, where the vaccine is updated periodically based on which strains are expected to circulate. Makes sense, like a regular tune-up for our immunity. Kind of. And there's also loads of research into uh, next-generation vaccines, things like pan-coronavirus vaccines that could maybe offer broader protection against multiple variants or even future novel coronaviruses. That's the hope anyway. Wow. Okay. So it's still very much an evolving field. Definitely. Which I think raises a point for you listening. Yeah. How do you navigate all this changing information? Yeah, that's a good question. This deep dive really highlights that scientific understanding isn't fixed, right? It grows and changes as we learn more, as we get more data. Absolutely. So just to recap, we touched on the, the different origin ideas out there, the whole process of viral evolution, those variants, and then the incredible journey of vaccine development and adaptation. Tried to give you that clear, concise overview. Hopefully we did. And I guess the final thought is, as you see new headlines or information. Yeah, remember to think critically. Look at the source. Look for the evidence. Understanding that this is a dynamic situation is key. It's going to keep developing. And seeing how that cycle of virus evolution and scientific response plays out in the future, that'll be something to watch.